I'm Margot Dodds. I'm one of the co-founders of Marine Connection and we have been working to end captivity worldwide for the past 30 years. Um, I'd just like to explain a bit why we're here because a lot of these people around here probably won't have a clue why we're here. Um, although in the UK we have no captive facilities that hold whales and dolphins anymore. The last one closed in 1993. Um, I'm of an age and have been campaigning long enough to remember seeing captive orcas in a public swimming pool at the end of Clacton Pier. I remember seeing Winnie in Windsor. We used to protest outside there every weekend. And I was there when Rocky went on the plane out to the Caribbean and was retired. So I've been doing this a long time. And the reason that I mention that is there's actually a, ro a lot of public misconception about captivity. They think because we don't have any captive facilities in the UK, we're fine. Unfortunately, we're not. Because there's companies like the one in this building behind me, Candover Investments, who are deep, deeply involved in investing in, in, in the captivity industry. Now, Candover Investments actually own a huge percentage of shares in a company called Park Renudos. Park Renudos have a sister company in the USA. That sister company is called Palace Entertainments, and they own Miami Sea Aquarium, where Lolita has been a prisoner and still is to this day. Now, Lolita is actually the sole survivor of the seven orcas that were captured back in 1970. She's the only one left. She's by herself in this tiny pool at Miami Sea Aquarium. And yet Miami Sea Aquarium, Park Renudos, and the people like Candover Investments in this building that profit from her being in captivity, refuse to listen to the retirement plan. There is a retirement plan in place. The retirement plan has been put in place by Ken Balcom, who has been working with the orcas, the southern resident orcas, since 1976. Howard Garrett from Orca Network, who I personally have known for about 20 years, and also been put together by Ingrid Visser, who works with the, free, the orcas, the wild orcas in New Zealand, and she also prepared a similar document for Morgan, who's currently in Laurel Park. Now, these are the people that have put together this proposal. They know what they're talking about. They know a lot about orcas. And yet, Park Renudos and Miami Sea Aquarium have actually said that the plan's misguided. Misguided how? They say it would put Lolita in danger if she was released. To me, that's a touch hypocritical given what they put Lolita through every day. Lolita has been by herself since Hugo died in 1980. And despite having on site veterinary care, these orcas suffer stress and anxiety. So, so why do Miami Sea Aquarium think that it would be any worse trying to give her a chance? Lolita is smart. Lolita's courageous and Lolita remembers. Her mother is still in the wild, or the orca believed to be her mother ocean's son, is still alive in the wild. She's 80 years old and she is still swimming freely with Lolita's pod and Lolita's family. I don't think Lolita has forgotten them, and I'm sure they haven't forgotten her. These are very sentient social mammals. Lolita to this day still uses the unique vocal dialect that these wild orcas use, distinct to her pod. So to say that she doesn't remember is just a farce. We believe that Lolita deserves a chance. We won't let her fall victim to the same destiny as so many before her. We won't allow her to perform until death. Companies like Candover and Park Renudos who profit from this must be heard, held accountable. For me, Lolita stands for patience, perseverance, and great strength of spirit.
She's a highly intelligent, highly social, and an amazing being. Lolita is alive, but she's not living. And we, de we think she deserves the chance to live. She's been forced to work for an industry where she's been dominated and manipulated for all of her life since she's been taken captive. And we think she deserves better. I'd just like to read you a short quote from John Hargrove. Um, John, for those who don't know, and I can't believe that nobody knows, was a trainer at SeaWorld for 20 years. He was in the documentary Blackfish, and, he's actually, and he was one of the brave trainers that came out and spoke up, because to be involved in an industry such as the captivity industry, and to come out and speak against them is actually really quite brave. It's, it, they tried to absolutely trash his, his reputation. So John had worked at other parks and he gave evidence in the Lolita case in the States. And when he was asked about Lolita, when he had been in to see her, he said, and this is a quote from John, he said, what I observed of her life and living conditions was one of the cruelest things I have witnessed. The absolutely twisted part of all of this is that I have no doubt her trainers love her, but this is not what love is. Love is not caging something so that it has no choice but to be with you and interact with you because you withhold food until they get it correct. He said, please, I pray all of this ends very quickly. And in closing, I'd like to say, I think, and I'm sure we'd all agreed, it's time to retire Lolita back to the waters where she was taken from. I want, <laughs> I want to say thank you to everyone here in London. And I want to say good luck to our colleagues on the other side of the Atlantic tomorrow who are going to stand up for Lolita. Together we can and we will do this. It's time to bring Lolita home. Free Lolita. Yeah.